All right. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm a minute early for starting, but there's a whole bunch of slides I want to go through, so I want to go through it quickly. Um, and as you may notice during this presentation, um, there, there's a lot of uh, text in it. And the reason why I've put a lot of text in it, so I, I can share it afterwards, so I can read it properly and learn from it, I hope. Uh, so I won't go through all the details on all the slides, but it's more like that I've set up the slides, not with just pictures only, which is really cool, but not really interesting to read afterwards. So that's why I've set up with a lot of text, so you can read through it, and I hope this helps you and enables you basically to grow and foster your Drupal development. Um, my name is Michel van Veldi. Um, I'm a regular speaker at DrupalCon. Um, uh, today I'm going to tell uh, a, well, it's a story, it's a presentation about is selling Drupal an art or a science? And I walk you through um, a lot of theory, which will, I hopefully, bring your minds boggling and stuff, and then uh, you'll, you'll learn from it. A short introduction. Um, as I said, Michel van Veldi, I'm the founder of OneShoe, an advertising and digital agency. We're specialized in Drupal for over 11 years, uh, working closely uh, with, with Dries on, on, on UX, on, on the beginning of Drupal, it was really cool. And I've been a community member for 11 years and co-organizer of the Dutch Drupal community, the German Drupal community, um, and, well, Splash Awards and a lot more. That's one thing I want to tell you guys. Uh, I've come up with a new initiative um, which I think is really exciting. Um, tomorrow, we're going to have the world's first Drupal PR and marketing sprint. We all know code sprints, but tomorrow, we're going to write PR and marketing material so which we can share all around the globe and beat the competition. It's never been done before, so I'm, I'm really excited. It's new, and uh, so tomorrow afternoon, uh, uh, I hope uh, I see some of you at the Drupal marketing and PR sprint. All right. Okay, so let's go into the presentation. Why is selling getting more and more important? Well, there's 10 factors that actually influence selling today. Um, basically, with the rise of the internet, the, there is more global competition. Um, yesterday, I learned there's an agency from the UK now competing on the German market because uh, the, uh, the German company was basically looking for uh, uh, an agency, and they were not only looking on the German market, but been looking at a broader perspective in, in Europe. So the competition is getting bigger. Um, it, for a salesperson, and I'm going to dive into the world of salespersons today, um, it's getting more difficult to reach decision makers. Uh, they've been, are, are being harassed by emails and stuff and, 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 and phone calls, and, and I get them as well every day. It's like, oh, I want to sell you something. Um, so it's really difficult uh, to get past the secretaries. You know? and, and, um, uh, what's also important is that selling has become more sophisticated. Um, and, and why is that? Well, because of the internet, there's so much information that most of the time our buyers are already aware of a lot of product details. So, you, so, so, so it's really becoming more difficult. Uh, prospects are also more skeptical. Um, the uh, economic crisis hasn't done us really well. You know, there's less budgets available, and, and uh, uh, that there's more arguments on, on, on basically uh, how to countermeasure your uh, your offer. All right. So I started the agency 11 years ago, and I knew I needed an account team to basically grow the agency. Um, and there's been a lot of hurdles. You know, and I'm going to be really open about this, and you can talk to me afterwards about all the hurdles I've been uh, taking. But I'm going to share some with you, um, because at first, I looked at Drupal as basically a tool. Um, and I was trying to sell Drupal as a tool, as a CMS. But over the years, I've learned that's not it. You know, we're not selling a product at all. But I was hiring product sellers you know, that try to sell products. That didn't work out that well, I can tell you. I'm really honest about that. So I dove into the world of selling at the time, and I've learned there's five selling skills, which I'm going to share with you. Basically, there's five types of persons you can identify within your organization. Um, and there's basically five skills. And you have the hunter, you have the closer, 
you have the consultative seller, you have the qualifier, and you have the farmer. And the question is, who are you? And, and, and I can ask this question because every one of you is selling every day. You know, you're selling your ideas, your dreams, and you know, if you want to go out for the weekend with your wife or 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 uh, or, or a husband, you know, you you got to sell that idea. So we're selling basically every day. You know, and every conversation, well, most of the conversation is about selling something. So the question is, who are you? So let's walk through them. Um, so basically, when you are a hunter, you looking for prospects. You know, you have a desire to meet new clients, you know, and that's what you love, that's where the energy is, you know. So, so you prospect consistently, you get past those secretaries, it's really important. You know ways how to do that, you know, and you get to the decision maker. And that's where it ends, you know, <laughs> because that's the thrill for the hunter, you know. And he receives plenty of introductions, he will prospect, he has no need for approval, uh, he recovers from re rejection, no, I'm not interested. Okay, you win some, you lose some, you move on. The problem is he's not focusing on closing the deal, you know. But you need hunters if you want to basically address a new market, you know, and, and build a new market. So you need the hunters. But, you know, they're not really closing the stuff, you know, and you need that signature in the end. All right. So then... Yeah, the closer, you know, he gets prospects, you know, he, he doesn't hunt, you know, he's just dying to get that signature, you know. Um, he gets prospects who agree to make decisions, and he gets to decision makers, you know, once he's in, you know. When there's a warm lead, you know, he will grab it, you know, and he won't let go because um, uh, he wants to uh, close the deal. So if you, if you set up a marketing campaign and leads are pouring in, you know, then it's interesting to have a closer at your office. So um, definitely closing urgency, he controls his emotions, no, no need for approval, but he won't accept put-offs. No, no, he wants that deal. All right. So then you have the consultative seller. You know, um, That's the person if you want to sell a solution. Um, you know, he's, he asks really, good, uh, asks really good questions and enough questions. You know, he's listening, listening the whole time. You know, and he uncovers basically the needs of the client. Um, so he's not presenting at inappropriate time. You know, um, he learns why prospects would buy. No need for approval. He does not assume. You know, there's a, there's a lot of you know, uh, sellers out there that, that make assumptions, you know, really important not to do that. And, and this guy is definitely controls his emotions. And, and then with the qualifier, you know, he is, you know, he knows to unravel the budget. You know, he asks good questions, he knows what the budget is. Um, uh, he does not assume, he has a, a, also no need for approval. And the qualifier has a supportive CRM, customer relationship management in place, you know, bec because he qualifies lead and he does that really properly. And then there's the farmer, you know, he also has cl closing urgency, but he won't, you know, find you any new leads, you know. So, so if you have, for example, a really large client, you know, if you work for, I don't know, for, for a DHL or a Coca-Cola or, or any other big firm, you know, he works on that client and, and he's farming, you know. He, he's getting new projects coming in every, every, uh, every week or month. Um, so, but he won't prospect, you know. He will not look for new clients. That's just not his thing. Now, that's where it comes, becomes really difficult, you know. Um, in what stage of your agency um, are you looking for what kind of person, you know? Because in the beginning, I was, I was, okay, I was making the mistake that I was hiring product sellers. You know, but Drupal's not a product, so okay, so I need a consultative seller. But okay, do I need a closer? Do I need a farmer? Do I need a hunter? Hey, I want to grow my agency. So, so finding the right person is the most difficult task there is. Because there's so many different kind of types of, of uh, account managers or salespeople. So making the right choice at the right time is really important for the success of your company. So be aware of that. Okay, so then there is, in terms of sales, the maturity model. It's a, uh, it's a model that's created by Holden, and I'll walk you through it. Um, as you have, when you start the agency, you know, you are an emerging seller, 
Then you can move on to a solution seller, compete seller, and customer advisor. These are the stages you go through, you know, and, and I urge you to take this into account, think of where you are, you know, how mature you are already, because if Drupal, you know, and we've all listened to Dries, you know, Dries uh, told us that um, Drupal is evolving, you know, into other segments, um, is getting, uh, uh, entering a more competitive market, you know, realize where you are with your agency um, in the maturity model of, in terms of sales. Okay, so let's have a look at the emerging and product seller. Um, the emerging and product seller, you know, and this, we hired them in the beginning, didn't work out that well. Um, they have conversations about products and services only. You know, yes, I got Drupal, I got these modules, and live with it. You know, this is what it is. But they're not listening really well. You know, they, 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 they are not like the consultative sellers we're looking for right now because um, they are trying to sell you a product. So we move over to the solution seller. That's basically stage two of the Holden model. Um, the uh, stage two sellers, they react to demand, but they elevate the conversation to bigger business issues. You know, they, they, they take a first step and they try to learn what the problem, problems are within the company. That's a stage two. And I think if you look at the, the average Drupal agency now, we've moved on from product sellers into solution sellers. But there's more stages, you know. Then you have stage three sellers. These are the people that actually understand all the political motives within the larger companies. Um, they know how to deal with that. You know, they listen to uh, the problems the company is facing, the political issues, um, and basically they compete through political support. And, and that's definitely a next level. You know, you, you must have a sense of urgency and a, a feeling that you need to understand basically the politics behind the companies you work for. And then, this is where we all want to be, let me assure you that. You want to become the customer advisor. This is basically a trusted, you be, have to become a trusted person within the company, you know. Um, and they create demand by establishing a cultural value for what they're selling, you know. Um, and they actually generate business value. So they're talking about how with a new business model we can, uh, uh, in combination with for example, Drupal, help you as an agency, uh, help you uh, uh, as a company. So, so this is interesting. This is where you should go to. So basically there are um, several stages. The customer's becoming bigger, um, and in terms of competitiveness, you know, I would definitely, if there's a strategy behind your company, you know, become a stage four seller. All right. So now we've identified the types of salespeople, we've identified the, the maturity model of your company. Uh, let's move on and going down into the meetings they have. You know, and this has become really interesting. You know, um, so let's say uh, you've, uh, as an account manager, you, you've passed the secretary, which is always you know, the, the most difficult step. Then you're talking to the CEO and Basically, you want to talk to them and basically make sure that everything you're, you're telling, you know, re actually reaches them. There are, um, and I urge you to read a book um, by Robert Cialdini, and um, I'll be sharing this presentation afterwards, so you don't have to write it down. Robert Cialdini, he's written a, a, a brilliant book about influence and how you all are influenced every day um, in making decisions. So if your account manager knows, you know, the facts, you know, uh, uh, and all the details of in, and, and how he is influenced, you know, um, you know, he can have a more constructive conversation with his client. So is, is selling, is it an art or a science? Is, it, is, is selling Drupal an art or a science? I'll come to that later, but I have an idea on that one. Okay, so... Let's go back to influence. Um, influence is basically uh, it's essential to selling uh, because information alone 
you know, that's what the product seller does. You know, product seller comes up, you know, here's my brochure, you know, th this is what Drupal can do. Um, that's not what persuades a person on the other side to actually buy from you, no. Um, it's how that information is presented. So your sales guy, or whether you are yourself selling Drupal, you know, you should look at it, okay, how am I presenting this? Yeah, that's really important. Because surveys show, and this is basically examined by the, the buying behaviors of 100,000 prospects, that has revealed that often a decision to purchase is based on, not on the features, but basically upon the salesperson, you know? And that's all about gaining trust. You know, it's it trust that is the trigger. It's not the product, it's, it's, it's trust. And how do you gain trust, you know? And, and, and when you read the book about influence, you know, you, you read, you know, how you as a person are being influenced and you can influence. And the model by Robert Chiodini goes in, and this is an English word I've, I've never learned to, to, to pronounce properly, reciprocity, I think it is. Uh, is it? Yeah? All right. Excellent. Well, yeah, thank you. Um, I help you, you help me. Uh, consistency. You know, are you being consistent? Um, can you agree uh, uh, upon consensus? Uh, liking, really important. You know, the liking factor within sales, really, really important. Um, are you being an authority? You know, uh, being an authority helps you get the deal. You know, I always tell my, my people, you know, get on stage. You know, why? Basically, people with authority are on stage. That's it, you know, and people like to buy from people with an authority. That's it. So I'm sharing this information with you, and I hope to see you all next, day, next year on stage when we organize a new DrupalCon. So be, become an authority. Scarcity, you know, um, yeah, okay, we have a limited amount of resources. If you want the deal, you know, you got to sign really quickly. It's little things that can help you closing the deal. Um, and these principles, they're measurable, repeatable. Um, so read the book, read the book Influence. It changed my life. You know, if I'm really looking different at, at communication and marketing, it's definitely worth the read. Okay, um, I've done a negotiation course and that changed my life as well. And um, as many of you know, um, I always want to share all the knowledge I have. Um, and the interesting bit is, and I didn't know that, that every conversation you have follows a model. And if you don't follow that model, you're in trouble. You know, conversations don't work well. You know, um, I'm gonna walk you through that model, and it's, I, I thought it was scary at the time, it's like, okay, are we programmed like this as a person? You know, is, is, is every conversation going like this? Yes, it is. And I'll walk you through it, um, and it, it, it's really interesting. Um, the model is about negotiation phases, but I've learned it's basically every conversation goes like that. Okay, so we have four negotiation phases. Um, and it's basically, you have a starting phase, you have an offering phase, you have a diagnose phase, and you have a closing phase. And you have to walk through them in every negotiation in this order. I can tell you a little story. You know, there was a sales guy who really wanted to work with me, you know, and he came up to me every time, hello, Mike, when are we going to do business? I'm like, Ugh. well, uh, never. He said, why? So, well, the way you approach me, you're not setting the atmosphere for us to have a proper conversation. As you know, you're a sales guy, please come up to me and say, hello, Mike, how are you doing? That's basically phase one. It's the starting phase. You have to create an atmosphere where everybody's comfortable. And when I come home and tell my wife, hey, blah, 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 she'd be like, what? I said, hello, darling, how are you doing? How was your day? And then I can tell my story, you know. If I don't do it, she'll be, overwhelmed me being like, okay, there's a lot of information coming my way straight away. Always create the atmosphere, even when you're at a client or telling to your wife or husband or whatever. It's, it's really important. So that's basically a negotiation climate you have to create. 
And I'm telling you about pulling and pushing. Don't push too much information in that time, but create an atmosphere where you listen. You know, we're talking about listening, consultative selling. All right. So then we move over to the offering phase. Um, and this is the phase in which you get to make your position known. Um, okay, we've, we've said, you know, and, and this is really interesting. You know, you're talking, you know, uh, hey, how are you doing? You're talking about the weather. Uh, you're talking about, you know, chit chat, things that, you know, are, are personal, you know, his personal interests or anything. And then you have to make a bridge. And that bridging thing is sometimes an awkward time. Okay, okay, so now, okay, well, it's, it's good to know you, you know, and, and you had a great weekend. And, um, okay, today we are here for negotiating blah, 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 blah. Um, and basically, it's good to have an agenda prepared. Today, I want to discuss A, B, and C, um, or I want to negotiate a new deal. And then you have to set your marker. It's really interesting. It says, OK, I want to sell it for you for like 100K. That's setting the marker. The other guy says, sorry, mate, got a budget of 60. You know, that's on the other end. You know. And then you've basically, in this phase, in the offering phase, um, you make your position known on where you are, what your end goal is, and then you can start negotiating. You know? And believe me, you're never on the same position. It's always giving and taking. Because it's, that's a miracle if you come in and say, yeah, 100K, cool, you know, done deal. So it's always a negotiation phase. All right. Um, so basically, you're listening to his position. You're asking about his position. What do you want? And then you're telling your position. And then you can start talking about arguments. You know, you're listening to arguments, and you repeat them. You know, am I listening correctly that you are stating, I want this, this, and this? Yes, that's true. So you know and you uncover all the arguments for his position. And you tell him yours. Sometimes you leave some arguments behind for a later stage. If possible, you have to be tactical about that one. OK, so then you go into the diagnose phase. Um, it's basically you have to build trust um, in this time. Um, and, and you don't ask questions just to drive your dream. Um, and it's a critical phase because you repeat what the client's needs are you basically make sure you're on the same page, but you also state your position. And this is part of the whole deal. It's really important you do that. If you don't do that and you, you just jump straight to negotiation, you know, you might come in a position where your client doesn't feel heard, you know, and if he doesn't feel heard, there's a lack of trust, and if there's lack of trust, forget the deal. So it's about listening. Okay, then come into the closing phase. This is where it gets exciting, you know. Um, this is where the negotiation is being finalized. Um, you negotiate, and it's about giving and taking. Okay, suppose you have 60K, but I'm offering it for 100K. Okay, we can move to 80, but and this is where you chip in and it says, okay, but I can give you less, I don't know, uh, 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 I don't know, we, we, we skipped the block, or we skipped the, uh, I don't know, which part of the, the CMS you're trying to build. You know what I mean? So, so this is negotiating. Okay, you want less, you have less money, I can offer you less. And then you have to come to a solution. Um, and when you've reached the deal, don't jump up and say, okay, signature here, bye-bye, that's it. No, as you've created the atmosphere, and you went from a you know, well-known, well, how do you say it, a well-prepared atmosphere in the beginning, you go into the negotiation phase. And that, that can be sometimes a tough, really tough negotiation. You know? and, and emotions are heating up. You know? And, and if, it's, if it's not working really well, you can take a break and stuff. And then, OK, you, then you finally reach the negotiation deal. You, you, you have your deal set up. You, you, you repeat, OK, did we conclude this? Yes, yes, yes. OK, well, I'm really happy that we've reached the deal. So 
And then you start talking about, you're starting chit-chatting again. And I urge you to start, you know, uh, how do you say it, uh, listening now to conversations and see how that flow goes. Because, you know, at the end, there's always a chit-chat phase again, and, you t and then you create an, an atmosphere where everybody's happy again. And you leave the room in a very happy state. Really important to go through that deal. Never jump up, run away, and that's it. No. Always end it with a chit-chat phase. It's quite scary, you know, if you know this, you know, and, and you see it happening over and over and over again every day. But that's just why humans communicate with each other. So if you break the rules, if you don't set the standard like this, there will be frustration because people are programmed to communicate like this. It's scary, but it's, it's true. Okay, so now we've learned on, on, on how to communicate. We know what kind of salesperson we have in-house or, or who you are uh, and, and what kind of things you still have to learn to become really good. Um, then it comes down to driving the business forward. And that's, I'm talking now about sales funnel management. Who knows about sales funnel management? Who knows what it is? Okay, there's not a lot of hands. All right, cool. Now I'm going to teach you something, and that's what I really like. All right, okay, so imagine, you know, you want to prospect, you want to hunt new prospects because you want to build your company, and you need new clients, you know, and the telephone, because your marketing campaign didn't work out as well, the telephone doesn't ring. Okay, shit, now what? I want to grow my company. How to do that? Okay, so you start prospecting. And you have to be aware that it's all about a funnel. And first you have to create awareness. That's basically the marketing campaign. You know, hi, here we are, um, and this is the product we're offering, and this is how we can help your company foster and grow. Okay, cool. So let's say, I don't know, I'm gonna do the details later on about the numbers. So after awareness, you can create leads, but leads, you know, this is where the hunter becomes really happy. Yeah, yeah, we've got 100 leads. And I always tell the hunters, that's great, you got 100 leads, man, but I don't have a signature. You know, but we've got 100 leads. I know, but no signature. So then you have to move them on from leads to prospects. And that's basically, um, you've basically given them an offer and they become a prospect. So you know how big your pipeline is. Because if I've sent out like 10 uh, uh, prospects of 100K, I know how big my pipeline is, and I can then, then start managing the amount of people you know, I should hire to basically fulfill those needs. Because I know for a fact that out of the 10 uh, uh, offers that I send out, I won't get them all. And if I get them all, I'm pretty much, oh no, I can't say that. I'm uh, uh, well buggered. So then you move into the sales phase, and you see, you need a lot of awareness, you need a lot of leads, and you move into sales. So then you look at some numbers. Okay, so let's say we have 13 deals qualified on average. And we know that from those 13 deals qualified, we can have 10 meetings. This is where the, the, the hunter is really happy. You know, like, yeah, yeah, we got a meeting. Okay, cool. And then we move over. And then we know that from the meetings held, it's a 50% chance you're going to get a proposal sent. So from 10, you go from 13 deals to 10 deals to five proposals sent. And then about 50% of them, let's say three, the terms are accepted. And there's negotiated about the terms as well. And it ends you up with one deal one. Imagine if you want 20 clients. How many qualified leads do you need? That's a lot. This scares the, hmm, do I have to close it up? All right, I'm nearly finished. Okay, but you want a deal, so that's good. Yeah, I want a deal, yeah. All right, so, so I'm closing up, thank you. All right, so how do you do this? How do you manage this? I'm going fast forward now. You do this in your CRM. You know, you need a customer relation management system for that, set it up, they're open source for a version of that. That's for a strategic person. It's to data to identify target customers, operational CRM, uh, collaborative CRM, and analytics. Okay, strategies. There's a lot of Drupal strategies. I'm going really fast forward now, so bear with me. All right, Drupal gives you the opportunity to adopt different sales strategies, and it depends on your mission and vision from your company. You can do a price strategy. 
I want to be the lowest price in the, uh, in the market. You know, I wouldn't suggest that, but people do it. Uh, you can have a product strategy, productize your Drupal installation and make a product out of it, you know, and, and turn it into a niche market, really interesting. You can have a differentiation strategy, that's an interesting one. You know, you can basically diversify and offer like UX and hosting and, and, and more of that to become uh, 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 different than your competitors. And you can have the solution strategy. And I can give you one example uh, really quickly. Um, 30 seconds example. Okay, I was working for DHL. I knew my competition was in there at a price strategy. And I was listening to the guy. I said, what is your problem? Um, he says, well, you know, we need efficiency. You know, and, and then I asked him, you have to make an investment in this website. Is there a business model behind it? He's like, a business model? Yeah, like a business proposition. He says, no. So I went back to the office, started thinking, okay, how can I help DHL? And I knew DHL, sending packages, they have a customer care center. And I came up with the idea, okay, let's, if we generate a website that can have 5% less calls within the call center by offering a state-of-the-art FAQ, the guy was saving thousands of euros every day with an investment of 30K, offering 200K in savings, the deal was done. He says, you understand my business. He never negotiated about the price, and we got the deal, and we are a long-term client of them. Okay, I really got to stop now. So my conclusion is, all right, selling is a form of art and a science, as I probably have mentioned, and do not sell Drupal. Understand the business, understand the problem, understand the business case, and become a trusted advisor. Thank you very much. <laughs> no worries, no worries. <laughs> Any questions, you can find me at the 